Download Festival 2025. Who will be playing? Question mark. What's up, dudes? I'm back with another video. Now, I'm not normally one for prediction videos. If you look through all the videos that I've done about download, I don't really do too many banned prediction ones. But download now has got so interesting, so vast when it comes to genres and all the sort of stuff they book on the lineup. It kind of feels like it's anything can happen with download now. So I find it more interesting to do this as they're not sort of relying on the same bands that they have been for the last kind of 10 years, which has obviously always been an issue with download. So yeah, in this one, I'm gonna try and predict some of the bands. I think I will get some of them right. Um, I'm sure there's some stuff on here that I will get horribly wrong. Uh, it'd be nice to revisit this video um, in the coming months. Obviously, we're just coming into October pretty much now, and normally October, November is when Download have their first announcement. So it should be interesting to compare this to what Download actually announce. So yeah, let's get into it, and um, hopefully some of these pay off. So there's gonna be no particular order that I do these bands in. Um, I'm not gonna go stage by stage. I haven't made a poster or anything like that but I will do the undercard first all the bands that I think that will be on feature on the undercard on any stage in any location on the poster then I will build up to what I think are the outsiders for headliners so people I think could possibly headline and then I will have my three headliners that I've picked that I believe will headline download 2025 obviously there is so much that goes into this festival to booking it to getting all these bands together obviously there's just so many things that can happen for you to book bands for this festival so download's always an interesting one to try and predict even if you're not actually writing it down you're like oh i think they're gonna play they're gonna play um so i think this one again like other years will be quite a vast array of music from all out of the alternative scene like uh, a lot of people have moaned download it's not metal anymore download hasn't really been a metal festival for a good 10 years plus i would say um it's more of an alternative festival i think if you have any music that's alternative obviously we've had a lot of alt pop and stuff on their lineup before we've had a lot of hip-hop but it's alternative versions of hip-hop so i think if you're in the alternative genre um and that can range from obviously you know like classical weird music where you just play stuff that's historical um all the way up to just being a standard metal band and everything in between can feature on a download lineup now so they come can be quite vast and quite varied which i think is good i know a lot of people don't like that about download now uh, which means they've switched to other festivals like bloodstock which cater to just a metal crowd but i like it i like how crazy it is and how you can go from seeing you know cannibal corpse one moment to seeing joe valance and bray the next so yeah exciting but let's see uh, what I've predicted for 2025. Okay, starting with Welsh metal legends, Bullet for My Valentine. Now, it's actually been ages since they played the festival. They did play the pilot in 2021, but I'm not going to count that, obviously, because it wasn't a proper download, although it was awesome. Uh, so they haven't actually played a proper download festival since 2018, believe it or not. So Bullet have been away for a long time. Uh, I think they've still been pumping out decent stuff within that time as well. I think they did mention in 2023 that they would be using 2024 to write a new album. Obviously, as we know as well, they're going on tour with Trivium to do the Poison Ascendancy, which should be a massive tour. Really, really, um, people that have got tickets for that, you absolutely lucky get. So I might get one at the last minute. Uh, but obviously with the baby, it's difficult to do any anything like that at the moment, especially going to gigs that are quite far away. Uh, but anyway, I digress. So I do think Bullet will be on this lineup. I think it's a perfect time for them. I think obviously, obviously, like I said, touring with Trivium. Trivium, we know, are headlining Bloodstock. I think Bullet might want to get involved if they've finished the album um, in maybe promoting that, maybe playing some new songs, um, a lot like they did with the last album, the Bullet for Valentine, self-titled. So yeah, I'm excited. I'm a huge Bullet fan. So I hope that this prediction is right. But yes, on the undercard, I am predicting Bullet My Valentine. And in the same vein, not musically, uh, but another band that's been away from download for way too long, it's Papa Roach. Um, believe it or not, Papa Roach have not played download since 2013, which is absolutely insane, considering that they have been consistently releasing 
great albums uh, from then until now. Uh, it's kind of mad that we've missed out on Papa Roach at Download for that long. Obviously, there are so many things that go into booking and tours and you know, are they ready? Is the money right? And all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, I really think it's time to have Papa Roach back at Download. Um, I think Ego Trip, their 2022 album, was, in my opinion, a top five Papa Roach album. I thought it was absolutely unbelievable. Um, I know a lot of the songs like Leave the Light On has been doing the rounds um, sort of around the internet after the fact that the album came out. So yeah, I think they've been doing really, really well, kept a lot of traction. Also similar to the Bullet thing, I think that they've also been writing some new material since then. I think Jacoby has said that in some interviews. So yeah, I think they have the right traction. I think it's the right time uh, for them just to pop up back at Download. And I know it's probably one of my more wishlist bands, um, but I do think there is a possibility of them playing as well um, but yeah I know all of us Pop Roach fans will be extremely excited especially with them doing the Infest tour uh, I think that's coming up in January so that will be really really exciting and I wonder if they'll come to download and play a full Infest set or just play some old school stuff um, I personally would like a mix of old and new because I do think in some instances Pop Roach's new stuff is superior to their old stuff uh, but if they just said hey we're going to come out and play Loads of stuff from Infest. I would also be like absolutely stoked for that. So yes, Papa Roach to play Download 2025. Wait, huh? before I go any further in this video, did you know I now have a Patreon? That's right, you can help support me and the channel and me having no money now, I've got a baby and going to festivals next year through my Patreon. Uh, there are loads of little bonuses you can get. There's loads of unseen vlogs that are not on YouTube. Um, loads of download vlogs now, some of my real, real older ones that are no longer on YouTube, they're only available on my Patreon. So there are lots of perks, lots of unseen footage. So if you do want to support me and the channel, the link to my Patreon is in the description. Thank you very much and back to the video. Now this might be an obvious one, but Sleep Token, of course, at the moment, one of the biggest British bands going on the alternative metal scene. Great live band, absolutely always loved them live. Wasn't that hot on the last album. I still do enjoy it, but just not as much as the first two. Um, they are still an absolutely tour de force live. Where they would be on the lineup, I have no idea. I know a lot of people are talking about them possibly being second stage headliners. I'm, I'm not sure if that's too much of a leap. I know they have played massive shows, you know, like Wembley, but having them on the second stage headliner, I would be unsure about. I think maybe start them off as the Avalanche stage headliner to begin with, see how that goes, pack out that tent, then maybe in a couple of years move on to the second stage or have them as, I don't know, main support on the main stage. It's hard to pinpoint how people's perceptions of Sleep Token are. They got a lot of hate because they got big so quickly, um, you know, going from basically no listeners on Spotify to just jumping up as soon as they release some great singles. Not their fault, of course, but I feel like every band that gets big really, really quickly gets that extra little grain of salt where people sort of just go, yeah, I'm not too sure about them. But I am a Sleep Token fan. Would love to see them back at download. Obviously, they didn't play that long ago, 2023. That wasn't the best Sleep Token performance I've ever seen, if I'm being honest. Uh, I've seen them since and it has been a lot better. Um, but yeah, I would definitely say Sleep Token to be on the 2025 lineup. Possibly another obvious one, but for one other reason they might not be. It's Malevolence. Now their show at Bloodstock this year was absolutely incredible. It really does prove that Malevolence should start to climb the lineups, especially at bigger festivals like Download. But also they did say that they were recording to bring out a new album in 2025. So I don't know whether that's going to hinder them playing the festival because maybe they want to spend time in the studio concentrating on that and not touring. Uh, I'm not sure if they've got any dates for next year already done. Probably not with them actually making a new album. I don't know how far along they are with that. So that might be a reason that they won't play. But I always think there is a chance, obviously, being a UK band and being so big in the metal scene that they could be one of the ones that pops up on the lineup and it would be a great treat for everyone. Because again, absolutely fantastic band. I, I must say, at the moment, these UK metal bands are absolutely killing it, which feels really good to have so many great homegrown talents. But yes, Malevolence to be on the undercard for 2025. Now, here's one you guys might not have expected, but don't call it a comeback, maybe? It's Marilyn Manson. Um, now, of course, there have been a lot of stuff surrounding Marilyn Manson for the last few years. I'm not sure if all that stuff has been to put to rest, uh, but I believe it has in some semblance. Um, he's healthy. He's sober. His new songs have been absolutely fantastic. He's obviously got a tour on the way. 
I feel like it might be the ideal time for Marilyn Manson to play. Now, I have some massive qualms with Marilyn Manson. I have been a huge Marilyn Manson fan literally since I started listening to rock music and metal music. Now, back in the day, I would have told you that you could not have seen a better band live. His performance is the band Fantastic. Now, as soon as he got started to get into his really substant issues, from about 2007 to pretty much now, I would say don't see him live because he was falling apart. The band just weren't everything that they should have been. Uh, obviously, he was having his issues and loads of stuff going on, so I wouldn't have recommended it. Now, after seeing some of the performances on YouTube from his latest shows, obviously him being clean sober and basically a brand new band, my God, it feels like the Manson of old. I really have wanted people to see how good this guy can be live and what those amazing songs can sound like in a live environment. But we haven't had that for so long, but I would absolutely love him to be announced on the lineup and to come out and play the most amazing show and just say, I'm back to what I used to do, which is making great songs and doing absolutely wildly incredible performances. So again, this might be a kind of wish list one, but it's also a very, it's very possible. I wouldn't put anything on this list that's not possible. Um, if I was to rack off all the bands I wanted to play, um, it would get, yeah, pretty wild and probably half of them would be wrong. So I do think there's a chance of Marilyn Manson playing. Um, I'm not sure how high on the lineup he will be, probably main support or just a little bit lower than that. Obviously, I think, I'm not sure how in advance Andy would book the undercard. I know the headliners would be quite a way, but we'll get to that. So yeah, I think Marilyn Manson could be a, a genuine possibility of playing. Uh, and if he did, I would be over the moon and hopefully he would bring it and put on a fantastic performance. So yes, Marilyn Manson for the undercard in 2025. Now, a band that didn't get to perform last year, unfortunately, due to sickness, it's Electric Callboy. Now, personally, I'm not a massive fan, but I know that hordes of the download community are and just the rock community in general and i know how many disappointed people there were last year when they didn't play so i am going to say electric cool boy to come back unless they've got some commitment somewhere else that i haven't double checked on i think that they would definitely be up for coming back and doing that slot again uh it probably would be slightly different obviously being a year but i think the electric cool boy fans were so disappointed last year when they didn't play there were so many people in electric cool boy track suits and they just had electric cool boy t-shirts on so you know even though i'm not a fan i did feel bad when they didn't play because i know how much people were looking forward to them um bad omens i'll just mention quickly um Obviously, they didn't play either. I can't remember the reasoning for that. I'm not a Bad Omens fan either, even if that's the right band. Is it Bad Omens? I think it was. Um, so I think that they might also be back. So I would put that in a sort of a side prediction to this one. Because these two bands didn't perform, if there are slots for them, and if they haven't got commitments anywhere else, I do predict Electric Callboy and Bad Omens to return in 2025. Now, my t-shirt is a dead giveaway for the next one. It's Cradle of Filth, one of my favorite bands. They have not played the festival again since 2018, which is quite crazy, obviously, them being a UK-based band. I know they've been doing a lot of tours overseas, a lot of tours in America, a lot of tours in Europe, uh, but I would really, really love to see them back at Download. They are working on new material now. Their last album was absolutely incredible. Um, I think that they have been going through a renaissance, Cradle of Filth, in their last four or five albums just absolutely knocking it out of the park every single time. So I would love nothing more than to see Cradle of Filth at Download 2025. It is always weird when you see them in broad daylight, especially when uh, you get a hot year, it's boiling hot, and you just see all of these done up goths. But it's the same for any sort of band that dress within the sort of death kind of style. It always looks weird when you see them in the middle of the day, probably a lot like Marilyn Manson as well. It's always better to see them in a darker environment. Uh, but I would really appreciate them coming back to play. And I am making it one of my predictions. So yes, Cradle of Filth for Download 2025. Now, another band that I absolutely love and should be back at Download, hopefully, fingers crossed for next year. They haven't played since 2017. It's In Flames. Now, their album Foregone that came out in 2023 was a massive hit. Critics loved it. All us fans loved it. It was just a tour de force of amazing metal. So I really do think it's time for them to get back to download. I did see them at Bloodstock in 2023. I will say it wasn't the best In Flames performance that I've seen, although I still enjoyed it. Um, I think them 
on the right stage uh, with all the Inflames fans, I think it would be absolutely incredible. Uh, so it's another one that I'm predicting in flames for download 2025. Right, little one, who do you think will be playing download 2025? Hey, what are your predictions? Lorna Shore. Oh, really? Oh my God. Okay, I'll do that in the next prediction. You're a big Will Ramos fan, aren't you? Now, the Deathcore Kings uh, that are Lorna Shaw, another one of my predictions to return. Obviously, they didn't play that long ago, but boy, did they go down so well in 2023. Uh, Pain Remains is a fantastic album as well. Not sure if they're working on anything else. I'm sure they are, because that was 2022, I believe. 2022, 2023? One of those years, anyway. Uh, so they probably are working on some other stuff. Not sure when that's going to come out, uh, but 2025 seems to be a big release year for everyone. So expect a lot of stuff from a lot of good bands in 2025. So I wouldn't be surprised if they're on that list as well. Uh, but live, just absolutely phenomenal. I've said it a million times, 10 out of 10 musicians, 10 out of 10 vocalists, just absolutely killing it. I am not the biggest Deathcore fan. There are bands that I absolutely love, but this band really does stand head and shoulders uh, above a lot of them, purely for the vocals. Obviously, this is what a lot of people go on. Uh, but I think musically, they are just absolutely phenomenal. Love them live. Would love to see another big dust pit like in 2023. So yes, I'm predicting, well, I'm not predicting actually, Midnight is predicting Lorna Shaw for 2025. I'm sure I couldn't go through a download prediction list without getting to this band. Yes, you all know who it is. If you don't, you soon will. It's Skin Dread. That's right, guys. We have gone an entire download festival without Skin Dread playing. Absolutely despicable behavior. We know they should be on every single lineup, whether you love them or you hate them. Always book Skin Dread. Book Skin Dread, Skin Dread, Skin Dread. Book three Skin Dread sets. Book five Skin Dread sets. Who cares? They're great live. I'm joking, not that many. But yes, one Skin Dread set, please, next year. Uh, that is my prediction. I have no idea if they're working at anything. I haven't researched it. Um, I have kind of liked their last few albums. Not fully. There's been a couple that I have, a couple that I haven't, um, but always a treat live, obviously a download specialty. They've become so synonymous with the festival, which I think is fantastic. I really like Benji, love the band, and yes, I am predicting the return of the King Skin Dread for download 2025. And my final prediction for the undercard will be a day to remember. Not a band that I enjoy at all. I think they were really weirdly placed on the card under KISS in 2022. Um, I know you can't always get headliners and supports to gel, but that is just completely two completely different things. Although KISS were fantastic. I didn't watch a day to remember, but when we get to my headliners, you'll see why I've predicted them. And I think they will flow in nicely to two, but I think maybe one properly of the um, headliners that I'm predicting. So yes, I know they are really great live, don't get me wrong, like I was, I say forced to watch them, I was asked to watch them by a friend of mine in 20, all the way back in 2013. And even though I'm not a fan, I thought they were fantastic, a really, really great live band. And I know that they have a hordes of fans out there. So yeah, I am predicting a day to remember to play Download 2025. Right, I have three headliners that are outside headliners. So I've got three that I have locked in who I think are going to be the headliners. These three I'm gonna go through are possibilities and could switch out with any of the ones that I have predicted for my final lineup. But I think that these are a possibility of happening, but not definite in my eyes. Okay, so the first one is Korn. Now I know people have been talking about why haven't Korn headlined? You know, Biscuit should probably be headlining as well at some point, but Korn have just been a staple of download, a staple of the metal scene. They are absolutely massive band. They have added so much to the legacy of metal music. Why haven't they headlined download? Now, after their show that they did in London, that I went to as well, the one at Gunnersbury, it was incredible, absolutely amazing. There is no reason why this band can't put on a headline show. I think the downfall with Korn is, can they be enough of a draw? Can they sell enough tickets? Doing Gunnersbury is one thing, headlining download is another. So that would be a really interesting experiment to have them headline. I think in the future they will. Are they a possibility for 2025? Yes. But did Andy Copping see enough of them before doing the, uh, the lineups and booking that uh, for him to actually put them on 2025? 
I'm not sure. So my first outside bet is Corn. Okay, my second outside bet, a band that I'm not sure people actually like it download, but it's Biffy Clyro. Now, as we've seen from some other announcements, they are playing some other European festivals around the time of download. So are they a possibility? Yes. Would the fans want them back at download? I know the Biffy fans would, myself included. Would the general download fans want them back? Probably not. 70-30, I would say. A lot of people do enjoy them. They don't seem to draw the biggest crowds, uh, but they do put a lot of outside eyes on the festival because they are so big in the alternative scene. So it's a double-edged sword with Biffy Clyro. They always put on fantastic performances. I feel like they get criticised way more than they should. I feel like they should be more appreciated, especially being a great British band. So it's a difficult one. Are they a possibility to be on the lineup? Of course. Are they a possibility to headline? Yes. Will they? Not sure, but they're not in my three solid predictions, but a possibility to play 2025, yes. Biffy Clyro, maybe? And my third and final outside bet to headline download 2025, it's Linkin Park. Of course, they are blowing up all over the shop at the moment uh, with the new singer and a new album coming out. Am I a fan? Not at all. Um, I don't want Linkin Park to come back in any semblance without Chester. That's just my feelings on it. But I know a lot of people are loving it. It's not really for me. I was one of the lucky people that got to see Linkin Park a lot back in the day. Probably seven or eight times I've seen Linkin Park. Um, but it's for the people that never got to see Linkin Park or really didn't get to appreciate them fully. And I totally understand that, which is why you guys crack on, enjoy this version of Linkin Park as much as you can. And just, yeah, enjoy yourselves. It's great. I won't be on board for it. But that's me and uh, you guys enjoy it. As for them headlining downloads, now in interviews, obviously Mike Schneider has stated that this has been in the works for quite a long time with them sort of making a comeback. Would they have been able to get a word to Andy to say we are available to festivals? It's a possibility. If Andy booked the headliners as far back as he said he did, then no. So this one again is really up in the air. Could they headline? Sure. Did they get in time to Andy and to the team? We're not sure about that, obviously, because it's not definitive. So yeah, I'm putting them as an outside bet. Um, I think I have three that are locked in that are probably more likely to play the festival. But Linkin Park is definitely a possibility. I know a lot of fans will enjoy it. Would I watch it? Of course I would. Would I enjoy it? Of course. Would I appreciate it for what it is? Yeah. I wouldn't, you know, get emotional and be singing the songs of my heart's content like I did when Chester was the singer, but I would enjoy watching it if it was at a festival. Would I pay to see it? No. Uh, but yes, Linky Park for download 2025, possibly. Right, so here we go. My predictions for the three headliners that will be headlining download festival. I say will be. I mean, I'm only predicting it. I'm not saying they will be, but there is always a possibility that they could. And these are my three picks. First off, there have been a lot of clues recently. Uh, they've announced that they're doing summer festivals and European tours and all sorts of stuff. A lot of signs are pointing towards the colour green behind me uh, in the little dots there. It is Green Day. Now, this is a band that I've talked about for a long time. I think I've done a video of bands that should play download back in, I don't know, 2021. Green Day was on it because I am still astonished that this band has never played Download, considering it's been going for so long now. I think that it will be a treat for everyone, especially the Green Day fans, but even I think people that aren't necessarily fans but would appreciate seeing Green Day there. Um, I think it will be a massive hit with pretty much everyone. So I am a 100% on board for Green Day headlining. It's been a long time coming. And this is one that I personally really have my fingers crossed for. I saw their performance um, at Isle of Wight, not live, but on TV. And boy, did that look absolutely fantastic. So yeah, bring that to download. I will be one very happy boy. And I'm sure a lot of you guys will as well. So yeah, my first headliner for 2025, fingers crossed, Green Day. My second prediction for download 2025 headliner would be bring me the horizon. Now I know they didn't play that long ago, but I do feel like this band are gonna become a predominant headliner at download 
in the future going forward and will become a staple of the festival. Now their performance in 2023 obviously is widely considered to be one of the best headline performances in the entirety history of Download and it was. It was absolutely mind-blowing, unbelievable. Sometimes you don't beat the first time, like I say with Slipknot, uh, their first headline in 2009 will never be topped. They have done some great performances since, but it's never been the same. So I'm not expecting them to be as, you know, be as amazed by them as I was in 2023. But I do still feel like Boom Their Eyes and have a lot to offer live. They've got such a vast array of albums and songs. I still think they can make any set interesting, depending on what set list they pick. I was not a fan of the latest album at all. In fact, I was quite disappointed with it. To be fair, I haven't gone back to it since its release. I listened to it probably twice and just went, it's not for me, uh, which is sad because I feel like the albums before absolutely blew me away. So I will go back to it if they are obviously announced for download. I might just go back to it anyway and just have another butch. But I do think there were strong signs because of the new album, because of the uh, other set was so loved by everyone there was a possibility of them coming back at any point for download but i do foresee them coming back this year obviously they were announced a lot like biffy for rock and park so around the same time it's definitely one of the ones i think might be locked in but you never know so yeah my second prediction for download 2025 bring me the horizon and my third and final prediction for headliners of download 2023 probably one not many people are going to want to hear a lot of people will um I'm, I still love this band. I know it's sort of grinding on people at download, but it's Iron Maiden. I feel like the way the band are going, the age that they're getting to, this might be one of the last chances I would have thought with the sort of new wave of bands coming in, headlining download. I know they have been a staple of download for a long time. I know not all of the performances have been to what Maiden would have expected, although I do think their last one in 2022 was incredible, probably one of the best times I've seen Maiden. I would still be excited to see them as we know that, you know, they say they're going to play forever, but that probably won't happen with the age range they're getting into now, just how life is. I'm sure they're going to start to slow down at some point, but they've got tour dates for next June and um, they might kick that tour off at download. I know it's a couple of weeks before the Birmingham show, but yeah, uh, my third prediction is Iron Maiden. Would I be happy with that? Yes. I'm sure it's 50-50 with the fans at download. I know obviously everyone loves Maiden. They are a great band. They're, they do have their critics as well. And to be fair, they have played download festival a hell of a lot. So I could see why people would just go, oh, Maiden again. But like I said, now for the new generation, it's a time to appreciate Maiden. Go and see them as much as you can because they might not be around forever as a lot of these kinds of bands within the same sort of timescales are starting to stop or end now. So yeah, I think that would be interesting one to end on, I think, Iron Maiden. I think that might be good on the Sunday to sort of wave goodbye to 2025. But hey, you never know. Anyway, Iron Maiden to headline download 2025. Yeah, so there you go. What did you think of those predictions? Hopefully I got a few right. Um, I, you know, I don't know, maybe I'll get all of them wrong. Who knows? I think I might be close with the final headliners, but you know, come the announcement, they could be completely wrong and out of the window. But yeah, I would love to know your guys' predictions as well. So put your predictions down in the comments and I will comment and see what you guys think. I'm sure you guys putting your heads together can think of some others that I thought, damn, I wish I thought of them as well. But this is the list I'm going with. Hopefully I get some of these right. I might go back to this after the announcement to go through and see how many I got right and how many I got wrong. That might make for an interesting video. But yes, as always, thank you very much for all the support. Everyone that's joined the Patreon so far, I really appreciate you. Um, it's just great to have people that support me and what I do. Absolutely incredible. You guys just never fail to surprise me and um, it always puts a smile on my face. It's fantastic. So as always, thank you very much for watching and I shall see you dudes in the next video. You should go and subscribe to my channel, just because, come on, subscribe.